I believe God, even though I can't see. I believe God. And one of the great secrets of a healthy spiritual church, and you can't find any better place than to go to the book of Acts, which was written this, read this morning, for the simple fact that the book of Acts tells about the founding of the Christian church. And not only about the founding, but it also tells us exactly how the church should be organized. If you read the entire book of Acts, you'll find out who the officers are supposed to be in the church and how everything was set up in his church. <coughs> So it's a great book to be familiar with. How do we go about building a great church? Well, one thing's for sure. It's not built in one service. And it takes a great deal more than one great sensational service. A lot of people think, boy, we found this great church. They had a great service today, and the next week they go and they're disappointed. A lot of things that affect the church. But all of us, when we think of the early church, the first thing that pops in our mind is the day of Pentecost. The day that the Christian church was pretty much birthed. And on that day, we're told in Scripture, Peter preached the gospel of Christ and told people the story of Christ's life. And there were 3,000 people baptized into the church that day. Now, the day of Pentecost must have been a tremendous day. It must have been magnificent. Can you imagine the enthusiasm in that crowd when 3,000 people are baptized in one day? I've often wondered, as much as Pentecost was such a wonderful experience, how long it took them to baptize 3,000 people <laughs> when you consider it was just the disciples doing it. Must have taken them all day and into the night. But the church in Jerusalem was not built just on that one service. We study history, we find that church historians have estimated that within seven years of the day of Pentecost, half of the population in Jerusalem had endorsed Christianity and become a part of the church. More than 100,000 people within seven years, beginning with 12 disciples who then baptized 3,000 and within seven years 100,000 people in the one church in Jerusalem. Pentecost was the beginning. But that was not the secret that caused the church of Jerusalem to spread out throughout the city and win all these people to Christianity. The verses that we read this morning take us behind the scenes a little bit to show the dynamic of what happens when a church reaches out to people. No church is a great church that is not obeying the great commission that Christ gave us. When he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Teach them. Baptize them. Make disciples of them. No church is a great church that is not consistent in trying to win people to Christ. That's our most important responsibility as a church, is to bring people into the kingdom of God. And there is no greatness in a church that is not seriously taking the commandments of God, the commandments of Christ, to go out. Remember Christ said, go out into the highways and byways. Today we might say the highways and the hedges and the alleys and the side streets. <laughs> and he didn't say just invite them. He said, compel them to come in. Now, I don't think he meant badger them, as we've seen in some of the videos recently. But I think he meant don't stop asking them. Keep asking them over and over and over. There are several secrets in these verses that we read this morning that give us the essential truths that we need. And we're going to look at the first one this morning. First, we see that there has to be a converted membership. A converted membership. What did the scripture say in verse 41? It said the people had a life-changing experience. In the NIV it says they were saved and added to the church. Others will say redeemed. 
and added to the church. But these people had a life-changing experience because of their encounter with God that day in the Gospel of Christ. And they gladly received the message of Christianity that changed their lives. And it says they were added to them 3,000 souls. Now we're excited this morning about the few we've had coming into our church in recent months. 3,000, I just can't imagine what it must have been like for that baptismal service. But the question is asked, the scripture says they were added to the church. How were they added? Who did the adding? You know, it's easy to get added to the church. But verse 47 says, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Not just that day of 3,000, but daily people were coming into the church and being baptized because of what they were seeing in the lives of the people. You know, you can go in and have your name added to any church row. You can attend a, a membership class like we have. Uh, some churches, all you have to do is fill out a card and let the church clerk add your name to the row. You can stand in front of the congregation and answer a few questions and have your membership added. You can do just about anything to become a member of a local church, but there's only one way to be added to Christ's church. And to have your name written in what Revelation calls